Hey guys, what's up? It's your boy Miguel back again with another video and today I have a foldable. This is probably one of the most anticipated and uh, sought after foldables right now in the market because we've pretty much seen all the foldables including the Galaxy Z Fold 5, the latest from uh, the OnePlus and also the Pixel Fold. But one phone that I didn't review is the Honor Magic V2. Now this phone, the reason why this is interesting is not only because obviously it's a foldable but this is probably one of the thinnest foldables that you can buy right now and this is actually the official international or the global version which is also available in the uae market from the official honor arabia website at the time of, of making this video it's still unavailable you can actually go ahead and deposit 300 dirhams if you want to uh, go ahead and book yourself a phone and not only is this the thinnest foldable out there which measures at 9.9 .9 millimeters in the folded state which is actually less than an iphone 14 pro max so it's pretty amazing but but there are also some improvements that are made on the inside including the display the battery and the hinge as well which actually make this phone probably one of the best foldables out there maybe so let's go ahead and unbox it see what we have so we have the 512 gig variant here which comes with 16 gigs of ram and you can get this with 256 gigs as well and i believe you can also get this in one terabyte options as well but regardless of what option you go with you're gonna get a default 16 gigs of ram which i believe is pretty decent so let's go ahead and unbox this and see what we have so we have the phone right up front here and wow just uh, just feeling this it's it's honestly wow this is so thin in the unfolded state like this kind of reminds me of uh, back when motorola came out with those extra thin devices this was back in i think in 2005 or 2007 i remember motorola coming out with pretty thin devices this kind of reminded me of that um, this is nothing i think it's just the phone holder um, we have the looks like the charger and this comes with a pretty hefty charger this is a 66 watt uh, charger that comes out of the box so this uh, supports fast charging and this also has a 5000 milliampere battery which is pretty common to hear but this is not just any regular 5000 milliampere battery and i'll discuss that in a little bit we also have the cable over here and this i believe is a usb a to usb c cable and last but not least we have i believe the booklet and some paperwork but because this is not the official for sale uh, version we really don't have any paperwork we just get a case out of it a protective case which has this sort of uh, fake carbon fiber look and then you also have the stand now looking at the phone well this comes in the black color and this has that vegan leather option on the back and i i mean i'm really stunned just by looking at how thin that is just look at that so um I, I read about this a little bit and I, I started to kind of compare different objects to how thin this is. This is thinner than an iPhone 14 battery. So the actual battery of the iPhone 14 is actually thicker than this phone in the unfolded state. So this is, I believe, around 4.4 millimeters in the unfolded state, which is pretty thin. This is this seems like it's gonna crack at any minute. So a big dilemma about foldables is that uh, whenever you're buying them, you have to keep in mind that you're sacrificing a lot of things. You're sacrificing the usability of the phone, you're sacrificing the battery, you're sacrificing the camera, you're sacrificing even some parts of the display as well. Um, but with this phone, the, the aim that Honor had was to make this phone feel like any other regular phone and then you have the obviously option to then go ahead and do this and use it as a foldable display. And this is pretty much doing that. So they're, they have pretty much achieved that with this phone because this does not feel like a foldable in the hands. I mean, if I was blindfolded and someone just gave me this phone in the hands, I wouldn't be able to tell that this is a foldable. Um, not only because even though it has a tall aspect ratio, it also is a little bit wide, which means that it's not narrow like the Galaxy um, uh, Fold 5, which really has an unusable front display. But the display on the front and on the inside are both capable of being used with a stylus or a pencil if you have it. On top of that, the display both on the inside and on the outside are both LTPO displays, which have 120 hertz which means they go down to one hertz whenever you need to save power or whenever it's not needed and they can go up to 120 whenever it's needed as well so that's pretty good to see on a phone that's not really known to make foldables it's probably one of the companies that came out with foldable concepts at the very end or probably near the end but they're for a third generation phone they're doing a really good job and 
I don't know how, but they fitted a 5,000 milliampere battery in this body. I mean, it, that's kind of surprising, but the technology that Honor is using is actually different. And not only is it enabling them to use a bigger battery, but it also even lasts longer than regular 5,000 milliampere battery because it's a more densely packed battery. The silicon carbon battery is what they're using with the Honor Magic VS2. And that technology allows them to have a thinner battery, but obviously one that's gonna even last them longer than usual. Let's go ahead and look at the design real quick. So uh, we have uh, the power button on this side, which is integrated with the fingerprint sensor. You have the volume rockers on this side. Um, you have uh, the uh, one of the stereo speakers on this side, one on the top. You also have the USB-C port. On this side, you don't have anything. And on the back, we have a triple camera setup with, I believe, two 50 megapixel cameras and then one ultra wide 20, 20 megapixel camera. The body of the phone is actually made up of metal. It's a magnesium alloy that they used this time. And we have glass on the front. We have plastic on the inside on the on the inner display. But the, uh, the uh, hinge this time is actually made up of a titanium alloy. And according to Honor, they have tested it for 400,000 uh, folds, which means that even after 400,000 uh, folds, the phone display or the inner display is not really going to be affected. It's not going to crack. Nothing's going to happen. Talking about the sizes, the inner display is a 7.92 inch display. Again, this is an OLED display uh, which has uh, 1 billion colors and it also has IMAX enhancement which also has HDR10 plus support. Uh, they bumped the screen brightness by 1600 nits, so it now goes up to 1600 nits. The front display is actually a 6.43 inch display. This is also an OLED display with LTPO technology. We also have the dimming technology over here, which does not flicker. We tested this against the Galaxy Z Fold 4. The Galaxy Z Fold 4 actually started to flicker when we lowered the brightness. And talking about the display on the outside, this has actually been bumped up to 2600 nits of brightness, which is pretty much the same as the latest Galaxy S24 Ultra, which just came out right now. And if we talk about the waterproofing, that's somewhere that the Honor Magic V2 still lacks in. But there is one thing about the components of the hinge. They're actually coated with the specific type of material, which are which you can say is splash resistant. So if you get a little bit of sweat or a little bit of water or some droplets, it's not really going to affect it that much. But don't expect to use this after you've properly dunked it in the water. So looking at the performance, this comes with Snapdragon's 8 Gen 2 chip. That's the last year's latest chip. And this comes paired with 16 gigs of RAM. Um, and looking at the numbers, we ran and 2 to n was able to give us 1.3 million points, which is pretty decent. This is the exact same numbers that we've seen on a lot of other phones that come with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip. You can very easily play whatever games you want with this phone without having to worry about the performance or about it slowing down. So talking about the camera, we have a triple camera set up on the back. So we have two 50 megapixel cameras one of is a wide uh, camera which is the main camera which comes with laser autofocus we have a second 50 megapixel camera which is the ultra wide uh, camera and then we have a 20 megapixel uh, telephoto lens this actually has been upgraded and this one also comes with 2.5 times optical zoom and optical image stabilization camera wise it's pretty good no uh, no complaints there and on the inside both the um, camera on the uh, folding display and on the outer display are 16 megapixel cameras. They're both pretty much the exact same. And quality wise, um, I don't have any complaints whatsoever. Honor is actually really good when it comes to the cameras and the image processing. So they're really doing a pretty good job there. And then the battery uh, is something that has also been upgraded. So 5,000 milliampere is something that we don't see on a lot of foldable phones. But the technology here is different because on such a thin phone, it's very, very difficult to pull out a 5,000 milliampere uh, battery. But what Honor has done is used a new technology. So the battery that's being used here is a carbon silicon battery, which allows the actual battery to be thinner but still allows you to have a bigger capacity so that's why we're able to see 5000 milliampere here and that technology also allows the battery to be more densely packed and because of that you can actually um, see uh, get more performance out of the phone you can get more juice out of the 5000 milliampere battery as you would opposed to a regular 5000 milliampere battery so no worries about there either and out of the box you are getting a 66 watt charger um, and this also will support wireless charging, which is only for reverse wireless charging, and that will only support it at five watts. So you can use it to charge, let's say your AirPods or other accessories if you have that. I just wanna do something. I have my, uh, my phone here, which is the iPhone 12 uh, Plus, and I just kind of want to show you guys how thin this is. So looking at them side by side, I mean, there is the, the phone, the foldable 
is a little bit thicker. I'm not saying that it's thin, but it's still not as thick as you would see other foldable phones. And even if we look at it from this side, um, you can't really, there's a very slight difference. But if I compare this to the, the, uh, the 14 Pro Max, which is actually a little bit thicker, the Magic V2 is actually just around the same or probably just about half a millimeter thinner uh, than it. So it's, it's actually, I'm, I'm, I'm just showing you guys this to, to, uh, to help you comprehend how thin this phone actually is. And uh, last but not least guys, talking about the, uh, about the price, well, Honor UAE or Honor Arabia still has to officially uh, give us a price on this phone, but uh, this is gonna be around $1,200. $1,200 is going to be maybe around the 4,500 to 5,000 uh, derm uh, mark, which is a little bit lower, or actually about three, four hundred dollars lower than what you can get the Galaxy Z Fold 5 for. I think that's a pretty good deal, considering that this pretty much does everything that the Galaxy Z Fold 5 does. Um, and in some areas actually does it better. If I was given the option to buy one of those, I would probably go ahead and buy the Honor phone um, just because obviously it's a thinner phone. Um, it has uh, probably even a better hinge. It has better displays. Um, I, I think in my opinion, the displays are slightly better because of the dimming technology and also because you're able to use uh, a stylus with both of the displays. And also you get a wider display here, which means that it's actually more practical to use if you just want to use this phone as a daily driver without having to worry that this is a foldable. Uh, so those are some of the things that I really like about this. And then obviously you have the option of a bigger battery, a better battery actually. Uh, so, I mean, looking at those things, this is probably a one of the first foldable phones that can actually be considered a flagship phone as well. And that's not something that I've said about previous foldable phones because you have to sacrifice the flagship level details that you get. A lot of it is sacrificed just because you have to make sure that it complies with the foldable display. But this is actually getting where you're, you don't think that this is not a uh, flagship device. So those are my thoughts. Let me know what your thoughts are. Do you think the same? Is there any other foldable that you think is better than this? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.